To their opponents, the Gurkhas are known as the most feared body of fighting men in the British Army. And this year saw them celebrate 200 years of loyal service to Britain. And now a new book, The Gurkhas' 200 Years of Service to the Crown, uses 200 pictures to illustrate their incredible history. And here to tell us about it is the book's author, Major General Craig Lawrence. Thank you for coming You're in. Welcome. It is a, a wonderful book. And I'm just wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the history and, and, and how uh, about British rule in India and the Gurkhas and how they started. Yes, the East India Company, 1814, was expanding north, trying to increase its territories. The Nepalese were expanding to the west and to the east, and conflict was inevitable. On the 31st of October, 1814, Major General Sir Rollo Gillespie, leading a force of 4,000 men against a defending force of 650 people was killed. That then started what was really a succession of two years of combat between Nepal and the East India Company. And during the middle of that, the East India Company, recognising a good thing when they saw it, started recruiting Gurkhas. And they've been in the service ever since. And that's what the book, as you say, commemorates. This picture here, for example, was taken in 1857 during the, uh, the Indian mutiny when Gurkhas remained loyal to the East India Company and didn't mutiny along with the rebels. And those soldiers you see there were the survivors from battles on the uh, ridge that overlooked looked um, Delhi. A remarkable story and it led to Gurkhas becoming a fully fledged part of the British Army, being called riflemen rather than sepoys and being given a truncheon rather than um, a colour to commemorate. So a, a really outstanding achievement. The book is a collaboration of lots of history that are written word and pictures as well. We've got more pictures to show now because the Gurkhas I think I'm already saying fought on European soil for the first time in the First World War. We have a picture here from France. And that's Gurkhas sharpening their kukris and it's a remarkable story. The first Gurkha Victoria Cross one at the Battle of Luz in 1815 during the First World War. And the figures are quite remarkable. 90,000 Gurkhas served during the First World War, 20,000 casualties, just over 6,000 of them died. And that story continues uh, to this day. And they fought in many major conflicts, um, Afghanistan, the Falklands conflict as well. Yes, in all of those conflicts, they've been a part of every battle that the British have been involved in over those 200 years, and that's the most remarkable thing. This picture here, for example, is the Falklands in 1982, the 7th Gurkhas taking part as part of the task force that went down to liberate the Falklands. And that's a, a captured Argentinian um, anti-air gun, I think. The Gurkhas are sort of shoulder to shoulder with the British Army for many, many years. Why do you think the relationship has worked so well? I think they've got a lot in common between British soldiers and Gurkha soldiers. Gurkha soldiers are tough, they're resilient, they grow up in a hard country, environment is, is demanding, and they have shown loyalty and they have this tremendous camaraderie that British soldiers have as well. And again, here in Afghanistan, this picture taken on one of the Herrick missions in Afghanistan, they've been on every Herrick deployment uh, for the last, gosh knows how many years since we've been there. So they make an absolutely valuable valuable contribution. They're very good at jungle warfare. This picture here shows they have a, a, a Gurkha battalion in Brunei that specialises in Gurkha warfare, in jungle warfare, and that transition to Afghanistan has been relatively straightforward for Gurkhas. The book is also raising money for the Gurkha Welfare Trust. I know you're heavily involved in that as well. And of course, in the news recently, we've heard so much about Nepal and the devastating earthquake there. Do we know what the situation is there at the moment? It's sort of gone out of the headlines a little bit. Yes, I mean, it, it, it still is quite remarkable that the amount of damage that there has been. Eight million people displaced, uh, the huge number of casualties, eight and a half thousand people killed. The Gurkha Welfare Trust, which supports Gurkha soldiers and their families in Nepal, and ex-Gurkha soldiers particularly, has been absolutely involved in this international effort to relieve the symptoms of the, of the earthquake. They have 34 welfare centres, operational centres throughout Nepal, which provide a real source of expertise, not just to our own Gurkha charities, but to all the aid agencies that are operating there. 